Hello there. Welcome to this week of Beyond Living Broadcast. We continue in the series. You can change your world. I thank God for the feedbacks we have got since last week. Since last week, it's awesome how people understand the little things. You can make a change and you will change your world. We read from Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 4, it says, The word of the Lord came to me. I pray that God's word will come to you today. He says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I want to say to you, you're not a mistake. You're not just a figment of your parents' imagination. God knew you before you were formed. He already sanctified you, he ordained you to actually be a prophet to the nations. That's why you can change your world. You were sent into this world as an answer. And this world, there is no COVID in the world that can change you. You will change your world. It's if COVID got potential to change how we all live, messed up everything and all that all stuff, imagine the people that God created. God's giving you and I the ability to overcome, ability to change things. That's exactly what we are talking about. And he said, wherever I send you, that's what you will do. Whatever I put in your mouth, that's what you will speak. So last week, we looked at attitude. This week, we want to continue. The second point is belief. Believe. If you're going to change your world, you must believe you are the one. You must believe you are able to. Believe is important. Extremely important in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. You have to understand I. I'm not talking about you. I can do all things. In Mark chapter 9 verse 23, he said, if you can believe that all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to he who believes. You see that? So the God who has chosen you, who has called you and I, he already said, if you believe, all things are possible. You have to believe for you. You have to believe that I can do all things. It's great if I have a lot of people with me, but my dear friends, I can do all things. <laughs> Amen. You can't say, oh, the reason I didn't do it because people didn't turn up in the office. The reason I didn't want to go to work is because nobody else was going. Listen to me. God is not going to call you at the judgment day and say, okay, I'm going to give you this, give you that because people didn't do it. I can do all things. Do you believe? He came and saved you. He died for you. He gave you a purpose for living. That's you. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Listen to something which he said there. Very important. He said, until you actually understand the I part, you will always underplay the God part. God didn't just do it so that you don't believe. He did it so that you can receive it. He said, I can do all things until you change the wrong information that you have been programmed with. This is one of the good things about this season. It helps us to reprogram our mind. You must change the wrong information. All the kind of things that are programmed inside you, change them, remove them so you can put a new hard disk in there. That says to you, you can't do it. You can achieve it. You can achieve it. If you tell yourself you're beautiful, you are beautiful. You tell yourself that you, you can achieve it. You can achieve it. Amen. Sometimes, my friend, the problem with some of us is not because God has not given us opportunities because we are thinking, you know, they're not looking for people like me. It's not people of my race, not people of my type. That's not the truth. The truth is God is changing things right now. And you can understand that God has brought change your way. I can do all things, no matter who you are. I remember the story of the, of the four lepers at the gates in 2 Kings chapter 7. You see, they were lepers. The people didn't want them in the city. But even the lepers felt we had something to contribute. And you see, what led to that was out of their frustration. Because if we stay locked down, we stay in this situation, we will die. Why don't we even die dry? Why don't we get up and make a change? Why don't we think about how this can become better? I believe I can bring about a change. And you know what? When they got up, God amplified their feet. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, as you begin to see yourself in who God has seen you already, may God amplify your effort. May God lift you above the hurdle. May God do great things you never expected. People will say, wow, ordinary lepers. Yes, so. 
Lepers did it. And that will be you in Jesus' name. It will not matter what color, what race, what ethnicity, whatever the thing is. They say, you mean you did it? Yes. You are going to bring a change. Why? Because you're going to change your world. Yes, you're going to change your world. Hallelujah. There is no telling to the people who believe in the power of their God. You must believe God loves you enough to be able to have chosen you. There's no question about God's ability. The question is, are you available? Is the availability going to match God's ability? It's going to be important because I'm looking in the land for somebody. Is that going to be you? In John chapter 6, verse 28 to 29, you know, God said, he said, what shall we do? They came to him. He said, what shall we do that we will do the works of he, of God? We want to do the works of God. In COVID season, we want to do the works of God. What can we do? There is a lockdown. He said, really? Are you sure? He said, believe. <laughs> All you need to do is not believe. Believe that greater is he that is in you than who is in the world. What's in the world COVID? That's COVID. I'm not asking you to be careless. No, you must come into understanding of do your protection and you must do it and get up there and make a difference. And make a difference. Make a difference to win a soul. Don't say, oh, I'm not a pastor. You are. You are a witness of the power of God. Make a difference to your family. Make a difference to the people around you. It's important. The enemy will have you do anything else. He will have you do anything else, but the reason why he chose you, he said, before you were formed, I knew you. You are the one, Jeremiah. Don't say I'm but a you. Don't give excuses. You can make a difference. Quickly, I mention another point, that you can change your world. You can change your work. You must unlock your traditional boundaries. Unlock your traditional boundaries. It's another word, it's globalization. You have to come into the understanding that God has not called you into a limited mindset. Unlock your boundaries. Remove those ungodly limits you have placed in yourself. You know, the church has finally woken up to understand that we can have church without walls. Some of us have been saying it for years. God has compelled everybody now to understand. I came to build my church not with walls. I came to reach out to the ends of the earth. Now the church has come to that point. But you also must understand that your business is without walls. You must understand that God has not called you just to minister to a group of people. Of your That's why you cannot have a service that can only be patronized by a group of people. You can't just preach to a group of people. Yes, you may minister to those people but have a package that makes sense for the rest of the world when they defined you. Global competition is imagined as global convergence. This is now God is making everything to be one, is bringing us together. So you see the competitive landscape has changed now. Now once people you call your enemy and now your partners because God is changing that mindset. When you want to change your world you must understand have your mind free of squabbling in little places. I remember Genesis chapter 13 when Lot left Seba, when Lot's herdsmen were quarreling with, with Abraham's herdsmen, they were fighting over a little strip of land. You know, this is our space. That's our space. Abraham had a perception of this is not necessary. The land is free before us. What did he do? He said, Lot, the land is before you. Take what you want. And when he left, God now said to Abraham, Abraham, lift up your eyes and see. You see that? Globalization. God's made him to see the land is bigger than what you thought it was. Gone are the days where you're going to be fighting over, oh, this is our place, this is our church, this is our dada. That's our space. God wants you to know. I've got bigger things in mind for you. Bigger, bigger things in mind for you. I pray for you that your eyes of understanding will be enlightened in this season. I pray for you that you will have the grace and the scope that you'll be able to see the width of the breadth and the depth of his love for you in this season. That we know that the God that we serve is the God of the whole world. Not God of the United Kingdom only, not God of America only. He's a God of the whole world. And you will have to train yourself in a way and in a manner. And you package your goods and your services and your message in a way that the world can receive it. I pray for you this day that you'll be impactful even into the ends 
of the earth. I'm going to be back in this amazing series and share some of the other things God showed me in this passage. But it is me, Wally Lena, saying to you today, you can rise beyond the meeting.